welcome to the Champs Elysees Film Festival Roundtables, the directors. Um, thank you for joining us. Today with us we have um, Anna Fidel for six years, Andrew Ramsey for Franny, and Honor Tackle for Applesauce. Welcome. Thank you. Nice um, to be here. <laughs> yes, thank you. So the very first question I want to ask you is, when did you know you wanted to be a filmmaker? Um, you, want, you want to get it first, Hannah? You go. Well, did you get a film school? Did you? I didn't. So then you, did you make films like in college or high school or anything like that? I studied film, but I always thought that the chance of actually making a living from this was so slim that I thought I would actually go the academic route and teach film theory. I was, uh, it was 1984, 1985. I was in the seventh grade. I'll never forget my friend Kirk Wilson saying, we're going to make a movie. I'm like, how are we going to make a movie? What are you talking about? I said, we have a VHS camcorder. We're going to make a movie. It's going to be called Camp Out with Death. <laughs> this was at the time, the, the Friday the 13th movies and the Halloween movies and slasher films were really, really big. And then um, we, uh, we spent the summer, I guess when I was maybe 12 years old, uh, making a horror film called Camp Out with Death. I went to Carolina, University of, Cha University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I studied film there, but then by the end of my junior year, I started having panic about, I don't, I'm not gonna be, I don't know, I can't make a movie, I don't know how to make a living making films, and then I decided to get a double major in journalism and, and film. And then I went to Wilmington, North Carolina for maybe six years and made independent films out there. Amazing. Yeah, it was fun, yeah. Yeah, my, I, I think, uh, I, I remember in, in high school, me and, uh, me and my friends made a movie called Junior Varsity Blues. It was a parody <laughs> on Varsity Blues, and uh, then I got the bug. Um, I went to college, I didn't go to film school, um, but I went to college, and in college I was, uh, I worked for Wes Anderson, I got a job there, and, and that kind of inspired me to go make movies, and I started making short films. You an athlete, Are you a football player or athlete in high school, no? I played sports in high school, but I wasn't, yeah, yeah, I played, I played soccer. Yeah. I was a swimmer also, but, uh, yeah. Did you play any sports? Tennis. Cause you're 30 and you're like you guys you're 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 not even 30 yet are you are you 30 now almost almost 30 and you guys are like you know doing so well at your age it's amazing at any age i think <laughs> and uh that, that's at, you know probably because you took things a little more seriously i mean I, I i don't know i think it's i you know i didn't i didn't really make movies in college or study i, I was I, I always watched a lot of movies i love movies um i did mostly like playwriting and stuff mm -hmm. and um and, uh, but the idea of making films didn't come in for me until a little later, until, until after, right? Working with Wes Anderson too, right? Yeah. Out of, out yeah, of but you know, it's that, you know, I was making coffee for him and Magna yeah. Lassies. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, but it was inspiring. That was yeah. pretty much just sort of like the, the veil was lifted of what you can kind of do is sort of like, oh, you know, you don't need to have a famous uncle to go do this. You know, you can yeah. kind of like figure it out. You're 30, and then you yeah. shot a documentary on 16, yeah. and then your new film on 35. Yeah. I think that's I think that's inspiring. Well, you know, yeah. I've never shot anything on film. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's it's, anything to be embarrassed yeah, about. Yeah, at all. You know? yeah, it's <laughs> really just like it's like I looked at it as like this is an aesthetic choice that I want to do, and yeah, then like sure. can we make it happen? You know, and it's yeah. like can we ask Kodak for free stuff? Can they and like it just sort of ends up working out. I shot my first feature, House of Pancakes. I didn't shoot it. Sean Lowell, uh, Paige Thomas, the DP, shot it on an old. I bought an old Fresolini 16 millimeter, millimeter camera that has the Mickey Mouse ears, right? Oh, you know what I mean? Awesome. And it, this is. It, I think it was used like in um, either World War II or Korean War or Vietnam Vietnam footage. Like the the news news um, outlets would shoot with these Fresolini cameras and it's amazing but it was so so old it would jam all the time too the film would constantly jam but it was we had to muffle it we didn't have a Barney you know to make it sound quieter we had to wrap a beach towel around it and <laughs> tape around it because it was so loud but there's muffle something it. so beautiful about that you know that I remember this was in 96 and that's like man that was, that was and I'd love to be on the streets of New York gorilla style with that camera again you know what I mean for I, I was speaking with um, um anyway no I won't go into that one Hannah, I wanted to ask you, um, does love last six years for you? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in a six year long relationship. Mm -hmm. Where does the um, inspiration for your movie come from? So the, one of the executive producers called me up and, and he had wanted to do a, a movie about a, uh, like a young adult domestic violence story or um, in a similar vein to, oh, what's, I'm now blocking in the name of the, Days of Wine and Roses. And um, so I watched that and 
thinking about how to modernize it and knowing that I wanted to make something that was a little more mainstream than what my first film was. Um, I, it just made sense that, that it takes place in college and that period of time when people are about to graduate is so terrifying to begin with because you just have no idea what your future is going to hold. Um, that if two kids grew up together and, and were in love for six years and then part ways, that seems like the right time that they should part ways if they're going to part ways. So. I don't know. It's so hard to, sh I found, it's just not particularly in my wheelhouse. I mean, it's a whole different skill to shoot and direct improv. Um, so we would go in, They obviously the two leads knew who their characters were and they had this outline and pictures, mm -hmm. but, so that was to help the crew kind of get the scene ready. But we would go into the space where we were shooting and then we would just feel it out according to what I had written in that little paragraph for the scene and any key dialogue. And then I would end up normally scripting out, like right there, oh, the wow. entire scene. Got it. And the last take would be the one you'd use based on all the dialogue you'd written? Well, from no, and, and then we would just cut, you know, cut whatever yeah. worked Two best. Two cameras? One camera. Two cameras yes. most of the time. Wow. Um, but yeah, it was really the writing, like right before you're about to shoot, yeah. was thrilling. And I think, and you know, the actors liked it because they could do one look at that and then throw that out the window. But at yeah. least they knew exactly, you know, what. It's direction. funny you say that because you know, like I did that a lot on my, sh and, it, and I, for me, it was my biggest mistake. Like the biggest mistake I made for sure was like calling audibles. Like, cause it's like, I'd worked on the script for so long yeah. and I was very confident in exactly what the idea was. Sure. And then for some reason, like right before we started shooting, we kind of had all these new ideas and like, you know, me and my actors and like just sort of, and, we, and I just kind of like changed the, a lot of stuff. And it was really fun and thrilling, but like in retrospect, I'm like, why the hell did I do that? You know, yeah. it was like, wow. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. You, when you watched it, you were thinking I should have stuck with what I yeah, had. Yeah, like, cause, like, cause that's what I've worked on for like two years, yeah. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Or like mm -hmm. a year and a half. And then suddenly like for a one week, or like a one day, I'm like, this is a better idea, let's do this. Like, I think it was more just sort of like a panic maybe, yeah, or, maybe. or also just sort of like new collaborators that I'm, you know, that you're sort of like, you know, kind of catering to in some ways because you want to make everyone happy. I think sure. that was, and I, that was probably my biggest learning curve, I think. And uh, I, I wanted to jump on and ask you again, yeah. uh, you talked of Netflix uh, helping you through college. Um, yeah. And they are distributing your movies, so how does that feel? Oh, cool. Because your, your movies, very much a, a cinema movie. Yeah. And yet, you know, we, we only get to watch it on the, on the TV. Uh, actually, <laughs> it's very exciting because um, I, yes, Netflix bought it, but um, we're also doing a theatrical. Just, we're partnering with The Orchard. With The Orchard? Nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, which is exciting for me because kind of after that deal, was worked out. I just I started feeling like this movie should be seen <laughs> in the yeah, theater. Yeah. Are they going to release like ten theaters the, the simultaneously with Netflix? I mean. uh, yeah. Well, Mar the, I mean, maybe I shouldn't go into exact details. Of we this. don't need to. We don't need to. Yeah, but but. But it will be in theaters. It will, it be, will be in theaters, theaters, and and yeah, I'm super excited by that. And you, Honor, I wanted to ask you, what's your relationship and, and your approach to genre films? Because most of the, I mean, the two last films you shot here at the festival, both uh, Summer of Blood and Applesauce, mm -hmm. have this very, um, I mean, it's scripted, it's comedy, but they always have this genre feel, so. Yeah, I'm just trying to broaden my audience, you know? I just want to find an audience. I still want to maintain some kind of independent sensibility and say something unique, at least, in my own mind. I mean, everything's... They say everything's been done, postmodernism, but you're trying to, uh, information in the world's changing so rapidly that you just extrapolate everything and say something new with it. I wrote a script two years ago called Catfight that I'm hopefully gonna make next about all female story about women fighting. And then I, I read it and they were women in their 20s and I read it recently and I just don't connect with it now because in two years, I've kind of already changed my worldview about mm -hmm. things, at least to some degree. Um, and I'm, and that's, I'm rewriting it based on my own generation. I have two last questions for all yeah. of you. Um, you have both talked now about audience and I was wondering, you're, you're auteur in some way, you're, you're independent filmmakers. So how do you balance um, maybe a more art house approach with reaching a larger audience, because as you've all talked, 
how do you find this balance in your work? Yeah, I, well, I definitely with this film, I definitely kind of this was that was the experiment for me in a lot of ways because uh, I, I come from a more art house background, and then this was like a, 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 a very much like a leap into a different pool for me. Um, so that was that was a learning curve for me, to be honest with you. Was, I was I was always thinking to myself like, how can I make the same types of movies that I've always been making, but like with these three actors or with these ideas or with this size of a crew. Um, and um, it didn't always go well. It, it was very much like learning as I go. And you also kind of learn in post production that like you're not, you're no longer making movies in your bedroom, you know, like because it's like it's a whole ecosystem that you have to kind of cater to in some ways. Um, yeah, but never stop making films in your bedroom. Yeah, regardless yeah, exactly. of regardless, like that much success, right. you always have to go back and make something in your bedroom. I, I mean, I could, I, you, know, know? I, you don't need sales, also, so, there, yeah. was, there was only a couple people on that, so <laughs> right, maybe you know? twelve people are going to yeah. see that movie. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean. but at the same time, I it, when we were prepping six years, I went out and I made a short with a bunch of friends, and Perfect. that yeah. turned out to be like it will be the highest, it was, ended up being a proof of concept then for a film that is going to have the biggest budget oh, to I date see. that oh, I cool. will oh, have yeah. worked for, or worked with, and it's like amazing to me. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, so you never know if you just go out and do a fun art project, yeah. what can happen from it. And maybe one last word from you, Andrew, what's your next project, so maybe to finish up. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing, uh, I'm writing two, two films right now. Um, and uh, kind of, kind of see which one comes first. And um, I'm, uh, I'm also, I'm working, I'm working in a new kind of position where I'm also kind of reading scripts to produce as well. So I'm bringing in some other projects and doing some other filmmakers that I like, doing and work with them. And um, but uh, the movie I'm writing, I think that's probably going to go next is it's about a, a young man who's paralyzed while committing a crime. It's sort of like a crime movie, but uh, then it's about his odyssey through the disability system of the prison. So it's kind of like hmm. this weird sort of like, uh, it's. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's exciting. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds great. That's awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for thank answering. You. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Thank you for coming. Yeah, hey, Paris, great to be in Paris for this <laughs> festival. Yeah, it's glad to have you here. <laughs>